So I guess you remember the inception architecture. It's uh, the paper that we covered from Google and it was being called Google Net. So how are they rethinking it? One aspect is they introduced batch normalization because that was a novel technique that was discovered after they wrote their paper. Therefore, they're just gonna use that batch normalization technique in that paper. And what are some other changes that they make to their architecture? This is their actual architecture. Things are only three by three convolutions with different strides. So whenever your stride is bigger than one, you're reducing your number of pixels from one layer to the other. That's why you have less pixels here. This is gonna have a different pixel from, uh, it's 147 and compared to 149. Can somebody say why? Yes. So it has to do with the boundary of your image or the boundary of your layer. So you're losing two points, one from left, one from right. And there is a bunch of other convolutions and here is where the contributions are. They are gonna use three inception modules on top of that five other type of inception modules, then another two inception modules. In the end, there is a global pooling. So global average pooling. And if you remember, it was introduced in the networking network paper then there are these logits, and then you do a softmax to give you the classifiers. To turn your numbers, your logits into probabilities, you do a softmax. So what are these inception modules? This is the first one. And this observation we already made. In the first sessions, we said that a five by five convolution has the same receptive field as two three by three convolutions stacked on top of each other in a deep fashion. So this is the first three by three convolution. And each one of these guys are gonna be strided by one. So it's gonna give you, this is the first number, this is the second number as you stride it to the right, this is the third number as you stride it to the right. Stride it right and up. That's what you get and so on. And then on top of that, you have another three by three convolution with filter size three. So they have the same receptive field and that's the size of the receptive field. It's gonna be five by five. One, two, three, four, five. So the idea is that you can replace a five by five convolution by two uh, three by three convolutions stacked on top of each other. So you're just adding the number of layers that you have. And that's what you're gonna do here. And the rest of it we know from the previous architectures. And these one by one convolutions are just to reduce the dimension so that you're doing less computation. And in the end, you're just gonna concatenate the filters. And you have three of them, three inception modules. And the idea is that you want to decrease the amount of computations that you make. Two three by three convolutions is cheaper than one five by five convolution computationally. So what is the other change? This is happening towards the end of the network when you are really deep. And then you are gonna use five of these inception modules. And the idea is that a seven by seven convolution, you can replace it by one by seven, 
seven by one, one by seven and seven by one. So this is just a seven by seven convolution. It has the same receptive field, but it has less parameters. And it's computationally cheaper. The, figure, the plot that you see here is for a one by three and then on top of that a three by one. And in the end you have three by three as your receptive field. Any questions so far? So a bunch of your seven by seven convolutions, you are replacing them this way. And the other change is two of these types of inception modules. So the idea is that you keep one by three, three by one, and you have three by three, and then you do one by three and three by one on top of that. Rather than stacking them on top of each other, you can put them next to each other. Here you are stacking to a one by three and then a three by one convolution on top of each other. Now you're putting them next to each other. What happens to striding and pulling? When you want to reduce the number of your pixels, this is how you do it. These two are the same things, but you are looking at them from different perspective. So this is where you put your strides. There's a stride two, there's a stride two, and there's a stride two. I think we are one minute over time. For those of you who want to leave, you are more than welcome to leave. I'm going to be around for those who have a question. I had a quick unrelated question, mm -hmm. or like slightly related. I think the last architecture for the uh, one of the models that we studied, the uh, layer before the output layer was like a one by one by 1024 or so. So I was just wondering, is there a difference with like your pre-output layer being close to the number of classes that you're trying to predict? Or does it pose a problem if you're like trying to predict three classes, but then the layer before that has like 4,000 uh, in length? So you mean, for instance, here? It's yeah. 48 and then you have 1,000. Yeah. So no, it doesn't matter. What you're going to do in, in the end is just a matrix multiplication to change from this huge dimension to maybe three here. Okay. To do a matrix multiplication to change your dimension. Okay. Thanks.